There she is, Daddy. Didn't I tell you that she'd be safe and sound? Oh, I guess you're right. All right, just hurry up. Dad, should I pick you up Good later morning. as well? Marina, you don't have to. You've already done enough for me. It's just hypertension, you know? Everyone at my age has it. Now, you go catch some bad guys. But what if something happens? Then I'll deal with myself. See you later. Morning, Dr. Semyonov. <laughs> Pavel, it's always nice to see you. Hello, sir. Okay, Pavel. You could have had a couple of days off before coming. Didn't you just get back? There's no time to lose. Right, let's go. Inside. Good morning, Andre. Good morning, sir. Give this young man a pass now, please. Let's go into work with us. Your ID, sir. All right, here it is. For how long? For good. I wasn't sure that you would be coming back to us, Pavel. I know that after you've graduated, you've got a lot of job offers, both from here and abroad. Being a part of your team is a great honor for me. Very well. And do I need you here? We'll discuss it. Uh -huh. Lisa, you gotta wait for us. Yes, sir, of course. Please, please press the button. Guys, meet Pavel. He's our new doctor. We relocated to this office three years after you left, so that makes it almost five Excuse years. Excuse me, yes? Sir Nikolai. Good morning. Good morning. Yes. Could I have a moment with you, sir? Why, what happened? Mm. Pavel, just one minute. Yes, sir, go I'm ahead. So now talk to me. Uh, uh, Pavel, that's right, there's the staff room. Oh, look, right, thank you. <laughs> it's <laughs> unbelievable. Andreev. Sergey. What Sergei. the hell, man? Oh, I missed you. I didn't see this coming, man. So good to see you again. <laughs> Same here. You. Oh, look... come on, don't do that, Sergey. <laughs> Pavel, you haven't changed. <laughs> so, what about you? Well, nothing much. Nothing. Come Nothing. on. <laughs> Still a novice. You're not fooling anyone here. Really? Poor me. We've got a surgery tomorrow. Cool. Yeah, of course it's cool. I can show you around here if you come with I'd me. I'd be happy to. All right, just a second, man. Is there some sort of occasion? Something similar to an open house. You didn't know that? No. We'll be operating on a journalist. It's like a reality show. She's quite famous. Don't be nervous. Mikhail is talented. You do know that, right? You're being handled by the best neurosurgeon. I know that. But how can't I worry on this occasion? It's going to be fine. Listen, film everything. Even if something goes wrong. Make sure that there's proper lighting and that I'd still look like a princess. Focus more on the doctors than blood. And make sure that it all looks beautiful, all right? So I agreed to assist him. Semyonov? Well, I, I'd assist him without question. There's another doctor. His name is... Kazachenko. He's not that skilled, but he's got connections. Do you have a wife now? Luckily, I don't have one. <laughs> Lucky, huh? <laughs> oh, you go on ahead. <clears throat> Hello there. How have you been? Anna, talk to me. Good afternoon. Good oh, hey. Afternoon. Anna. Listen, that won't happen again. You already said that three times. But Anna, please. I don't have time for this. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Well, Sergey, ready? Yes, I'm ready, sir. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Go on, get inside. As we can all observe from the tomography result, the contrast agents accumulated by the meningioma. Olga. As you know, we don't usually allow patients to attend the council meeting, but in your case, we will make an exception. Due to your professional background and your esteemed talents, we invited you to attend this meeting. You are going to see everything for yourself. And after that, we can talk. Are we in agreement? Yes. Good morning, everyone. I thank you for the opportunity that you gave me. Hmm. The meningioma's location increases the risk of the patient ending up with aphasia, and the neoplasm has been exhibiting enhanced expansion. We therefore conclude that surgical intervention is indispensable. Now, for our best approach, I will give the floor to my colleague, Sergei Strelnikov. 
The location of the neoplasm makes it impossible to remove it completely. And, uh, during the surgery, we'll decide which part of the neoplasm should remain. But wouldn't that course of action put the patient at risk of a relapse? There will always be that risk. That's only natural. Pardon me. Uh, pardon me, everyone. Allow me to introduce my student. Eight years ago, he initiated his career as a neurosurgeon right here in our clinic. Then he went to the United States to pursue an internship, and now he's back with us. So everyone, welcome our Dr. Pavel Andreev. I appreciate it, Dr. Seminov. Thank you all for the warm welcome. You're too kind. Glad to have you back with us. Dr. Varlamova. Thank you. All right, later. Uh, yes. What's your opinion, doctor? Well, if we were just talking about saving the patient's life, partial removal of the tumor is an option. But that may put her at risk of speech disorders. If her Broca's area is damaged, or if the relapse cell formation affects this area, then it can possibly ruin her speech center, which will then render speech production impossible. Excuse me, my colleagues. I don't believe the purpose of this meeting is to speculate on the potential risks. Wait, if... wait, wait. Please, I'm actually interested in discussing the risks. Olga. No, I had a consultation. I know the underlying complications. Last year, someone lost his hearing after his meningioma was removed. I just want to hear that I'll be completely fine after the surgery's done. Olga, please don't be paranoid. There's no doctor that can provide an ironclad guarantee to their patients. No, that... Dr. Mikhail, I want to be confident that I won't be impaired after the surgery. Olga, we'll do our best. Of but course. I can't risk it. I have to get back to my work. Do you understand me? Let's all calm down, ladies and gentlemen. Emotions won't help us in this situation. Listen, doctor, I want you to be frank with me. Am I risking my volubility here? Uh, Olga, I believe we talked about this, right? Um, didn't you already approve the no, operation despite being All brief? right, I'll make myself crystal clear. If I can't last a year with this in my head, I'd rather take that or even just six months living with an ordinary life where I can keep doing whatever I want than suffer from aphasia. Put down the camera. Just leave her awake. What? If you don't go to sleep, we'll be able to track your speech center. Wait, are you being serious right now, Dr. Andre? Yes, of course. Olga, please give us a minute. What's happening? Pavel, I'm glad you're back with us. But, uh, don't you think it's quite impolite to, uh, intervene like that? It's a conference. Prognostics based on our data guarantees a 90% success rate. I don't understand I'll why stay we're having conscious an issue with that. While someone drills into my head? But he listened to me. Can't you just sit down and listen for today? Just observe us. Let Kazachenko and I take charge. That's impossible. It takes at least a week to prepare for an awake surgery. Maybe even 10 days. And you know it's psychologically you speak, tiring. Speak, speak, and speak. Alerting the surgeon if... They're unintentionally trampling with your Brokus area, right? I don't mean to be impolite, but she does have a chance of being aphasic. No, I have no reason to agree. This idea is crazy. So what does that mean? Doctor, why are you leaving? What's going on? Tell me what's happening! So... My colleagues, the recent suggestion of Dr. Pavel will guarantee 100% removal without any risks of inflicting any damage to our patient's Brokus area. But... Kasachenko doesn't feel ready to perform that kind of operation. Looks like it's my job. So we have to make a decision on who's going to conduct it. Dr. Sergei Strelnikov, will you? Or maybe you, Dr. Pavel. Oh dear. Excuse me, please. If I may, uh, Dr. Sergei, how many awake operations have you conducted? More than 20. Hmm. And you? What? How many awake operations have you finished? Uh, around 50, but... Uh... Dr. Nikolai, if I have the right to choose, I want Dr. Pavel to conduct the operation. Olga, excuse me. Leave those decisions to us. Well then, let's try to agree on something. Dr. Pavel will conduct the operation. <laughs> Sergei, you will be his assistant. Sure. Colleagues? Good luck to you, and to our dear patients. Today, Today we're we're ever. Ever.
You must be disappointed. No, of course not. It's just more proof that my husband is. Hmm, it almost feels the same as my first date. You get worried the longer that you keep waiting. Ladies, we should prepare for the operation. Oh. <laughs> Ma'am, um, we have to shave the skull for the surgery. Wait, no, uh, the hair. Uh, uh, what I mean is... Don't worry, I know how hard it is to find the right words. Hmm? <laughs> All right. What do I do now? Lie down here. Did you film that too? Cut it! Delete that footage! I bet that the cameraman's gonna walk out or faint. They're used to filming these things. But I have to respect Olga's boldness. A girl wouldn't normally show herself on camera in such bad state. Open skull and all. Well, I mean, at least she gets to prove that she's got brains, am I right? There are three things I can watch forever. First is fire, second is our anesthesiologist. I couldn't agree with you more. <laughs> and third would have to be my beloved interns, ready to start working. Get out of here now. Good one, sir. <clears throat> <laughs> How are you doing? I'm doing all right. I rented a place, haven't unpacked. No food yet either. Seriously, don't get in our way, you understand? Hey, wait, Pavel, don't rush things. What's wrong with you? Doctor, the patient's ready. Excellent. Oh, good luck to everyone today and always. Scalpel, please. We are making an incision, separating all the layers of the skin. Uh, Dr. Nikolai, is it okay for me to watch the surgery? Of course, Maxim, get closer. Relax. Now sewing her cranium. So tell me, Pavel, why'd you come back? Did you miss me that much? Uh-huh. Okay, for sure. No, but seriously, is it bad over there? No. I just realized where my skills are truly needed. We're proceeding to the second state. Awaken the patient. And I'm sure you know Dr. Seminov's charisma. Waking up? Uh-huh. I think his decision's truly astonishing. Yeah. He's an extremely talented doctor. We're lucky to have him. Have you started yet? The operation is in full swing. How are you feeling, Olga? Are you okay? I'm okay. It is fantastic. Well, that's good then. Commence the stimulation of the cortex. Don't worry, ma'am. Everything's all right. We're checking the connection between the brain and body. Mm -hmm. 14 milliampers. We see an active response. Here you go. Oh. Feel free to talk to us, Miss Olga. What? Do you remember what I told you, Miss Olga? We need you to talk to us. Do you have a favorite poet? A poet? Uh, mm -hmm. I don't know. Uh, mm -hmm. Well, uh, hmm. a, a poet. The speech center. You're all right. Uh. 
Mm, a poet. That's right. Uh, Kipling. Uh... Excellent. Can you share one of his poems? Guide us with your favorite work. Tell us about it. Excuse me. If you can keep your head when all about you... Very good. ...are losing theirs and blaming it on you... Right. If you can... Oh. No need to worry. You're all right. Go on, keep trying. Everything's fine. Dissector? If you can trust yourself... Easy, 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 easy. If you if, can trust yourself... When all men doubt you... If... If... You can trust... Doctor, what's that? Mm -hmm. Everything's fine. Do you remember the next if, line? If... If you can trust... Yourself when all men doubt you, but make allowance for Just their keep doubting going. too. If you can wait and not be tired by waiting or being lied about, don't ever deal in lies. Or being hated, don't ever give way to hating. And yet don't look too good nor talk too wise. If you can dream and not make dreams your own master, if you can think and not make thoughts your aim. If you can meet with triumph and Don't disaster, film me, please. And just point the camera at her. imposters just the same. If, if you can, can make one heap of all your winnings and, and then risk it on one turn of pitch and, and toss and, and lose and then courageously start, start again at your beginnings, beginnings. And, and never, never breathe, breathe a word, word about your loss. Forehead. If you can force your heart and nerve and sinew to serve your turn long after they are gone. And so hold on when there is nothing in you except the will which says to them, hold on if you can and keep your virtue. All right, you should rejoice. Your wish has finally been granted and you're good at poetry, right? <sighs> Thank you, doctor. Oh, you can relax now. Okay, then. Please wrap it up, Dr. Sergey. So, how was it? Did you like the show? How could you refuse the operation? Father told me you were the best. He's helping you out constantly. Nonsense! It's not to the merit of your damn father that he brought that woman into our clinic. Emma, you should leave. Let's talk at home. What do you mean, leave? Tell me why you refused. What do you want from me, Emma? Leave me alone! I have a job to do here! What are you staring at? Go and watch your, your stupid movies! Take a selfie with that damn duck face you keep doing! Surf the internet! Try doing something useful for once. Okay, honey. Are you stupid or what? Doctor, here are some x-rays for you. Talk to me about it. These are the results of Svetov's scans. Svetov is the son of that politician. Yeah, right, of course. Good job, thank you. <sighs> this does make sense. Hey, we're finished. Thank you. Hello, colleagues. Congratulations on a successful operation. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Let me ask, Dr. Pravel, do you have any plans for tonight? No, I don't. There's going to be an operation, one that's significantly intricate. I can't explain it briefly. You'd have to see this cancer yourself. But here's the catch. 
This patient's actually from a different clinic, so I'll have this cats at my home. I'd like you to swing by if you can. Yes, of course. Very good. Get yourself some rest, then we'll meet at my place to discuss the details. This one was lying down like this, right, like that, like that. What about the hand? The head was there, right. Move to the right, and the hand was like this. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay. And then very what happened good. next? Very good. Then Stepan shot at the victim, then the guy fell, hey, there, the were, there were lots of blood. The and then this guy grabbed the bag with the jewelry and then bolted straight to that street hey, over there. shut up, you idiot! Calm down, I didn't take sir. any jewelry! Don't believe him, I swear, I'm not involved! I was just Shut up, Mirinov. Yeah. Okay, then, what happened oh, next? He, he ran away, just then he got inside the tram right there. The tram took off, and after that, I called you guys. Uh, I'm sorry. I mean, I called the police. Hold on a second. The suspect boarded the tram, and I'm then... I'm telling you, I got on the tram. As soon as I heard the shooting, I just hurried away. I have nothing to do with whatever this is. There are lots of people who board the tram at this stop. Why not blame them, too? So the too? suspect got on the tram, and what did you do? You immediately called the police, correct? Well, of course I did. I'm a financially responsible person. They can't charge me with stealing the jewelry. No, this is the security's fault. There's no need to be upset, sir. All the trams are equipped with a GPS. The dispatcher said the latest tram was here 10 minutes before the call. So Miranov left before that. The shopkeeper must have hidden the jewelry before calling the police. Eat it! <laughs> All right, then. You idiot! You thought All right. you could frame You really are the best, Marina! <laughs> Take this off, sir! Go Come on, on leave! Quick. Hurry, hurry! <laughs> hurry. Right. Hey, Hello? Right. Yes, Dad, it's me. Why weren't you answering my calls? Come on! Get that was long. <laughs> okay, I'll be free in 30 minutes, so I wanted to pick you up and... So, can I go now? Yes, I right, want to. Right, understood. Why do it in front of the cameras? Yeah. <laughs> Shouldn't we have waited? He could have revealed everyone, made a confession. And charge Miranov with another five years? Is Marina, don't we already know that he's a criminal? It doesn't matter. He has the right to an attorney, and my duty is to protect him. All right, then. Either way, I need a cup of coffee. Go on. At your age, it's no longer safe to drink coffee, sir. Well? I'm just six years older than you. Still young. Besides, we have a lot of time to spare, anyway. Right. We should head out to the morgue. They won't let me in without you. Marina, you know I miss the times when we'd go out for dinner, hmm? Well, there's no need to relive the past. And let me remind you that you're married now, and it's time to be a faithful husband, understand? All right, all right. I'm being stupid. You're just a yep. co-worker. Let's just do this business in the morgue. Sergey, I understand that you're upset, but it's not like that's gonna be your final operation, is it? Are you trying to cheer me up? Yes, I'm trying to do that. He just looked like you could use a helping hand. My best friend's not just surgery for me. Making me look stupid. Sergey, it's not about stealing anything. He saved a patient from being a phasic. Like I'm about to save you from your misery. So now you're forgiven? And invited for dinner. Hmm. Your place at nine? At nine? But I'm on duty tonight. Tomorrow. Well, there's always the staff room. You know, Sergey, your suggestion is indecent. That's who I am. Dr. Nikolai, I'm headed off in the same direction as you. Mind giving me a lift? Oh, uh, sure. Well, thank you. Doctor, may I ask you something? Yes? I can't help but think about what happened earlier. Why'd you give my surgery to Andrea? Wasn't that your choice? But I'm sure you are aware of the risks. These type of operations require a great deal of preparation. Do you have an idea, Doctor? 
how our patients feel before an operation, what's on their mind. With every minute, waiting for the anesthesia. I'm sorry, Dr. Nikolai, but isn't that mostly sentiment? I believe Doctor, that... Doctor, just imagine yourself as the patient on the table. Wouldn't you be just as paranoid? You would be terrified. I see your point, but I disagree. You know, they say that people tend to get more sentimental with age. Now, let's talk about the situation with Andriev. Okay, then. Mikhail, I'll be honest with you. Good, you should. Your commitment elevates you as a great manager. But you are mediocre as a surgeon. The operation on that woman wasn't state-funded. You got scared at the moment and refused her. Even though she's already paid, right? Listen, if all our operations were state-funded, the clinic would have already been closed. Long ago. It's always been my private patients who fund your generous decisions and your reckless so-called, so-called students. Therefore, it's not just for my sake. Mikhail. Everyone already knows for whose sake it's for. That's your stop. Mm. <sighs> That's a mistake. You just made a mistake. Thanks for the ride. Pavel. Yeah, I wanted to have a word with you. Uh, that's all right, man. Don't take it to heart. Your surgery was immaculate. Thank you, and sorry it was your surgery. Oh, uh, yes, that's true. We would have removed the tumor partially, but you... You did something more. Oh, all right. But honestly, Mikhail's the problem. Why? What's the problem? Well, you hurt his feelings. <laughs> I thought so. And he brings us all the patients that make our hospital famous nationwide. But I guess that's his job, isn't it? Yes, and your words are factual, but you shouldn't have said them in such a public manner, you know? I shouldn't have. Well, yes. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, welcome. Mm. Well done. Thank you. Thank you. <sighs> there. Go. <sighs> Evening. Closing the door isn't rocket science. 
Evening. Dad, Mikhail's home. Father wants to have a word with you. Huh? Good evening to you, sir. How could you, Mikhail? I have been busy working hard on your promotion for two years. I made it. So you were the only candidate, and you couldn't even do one operation. You have to make that Andreev shut up. I wanted to shut him up, but he was only speaking. Mikhail, don't waste my time with excuses. What's important is that surgery succeeded. But sadly, the success was no thanks to you. Excuse me, sir. I'd like to wash my hands. Hold on. There's one more thing I have to know. Come closer. What about that boy Svetov? Is it really that serious? Uh, does his father know this? He does. And he was asking for all the details you have. It has high severity. And? A surgery is a must here, yes. Mm -hmm. Hmm. Do you think that it'll be better if Semyonov handled this? No, I can manage it. Can you? Yes. Hmm. You must do your best. Nika, dear! Daddy, I've been waiting for you. Hello there, darling. Now you have a new opportunity. Do use it well. Nika, say goodbye to your grandpa. He's about to leave now. Bye-bye. You should wash your hands. Let's talk later, Nika. Nika, finish your homework. But mom... Nika. Thank you, father. Take yeah. care. I'll see you then. Please take care on your way home. If your friend didn't act like a pretentious celebrity, there wouldn't have been any problems. <sighs> I actually thought that you're a loser. But you're just another pathetic coward. Sorry, but my dad can't help you with this mess. What's the matter, little one? Nika, dear. My darling, come here. Don't believe a word she's saying. You're brave and caring. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my darling. Don't cry, little one. That's not what mommy thinks. She just overreacted a bit. Do you know that Olga had an operation today? Mm hmm <laughs> Mommy was worried for her. So she's just upset. It's okay. Stop crying, darling, okay? No more tears for me tonight. Mm, they're too salty for me. Wasn't there a very special dress that you wanted to show me? Do you want to see it? Of course I do. Let's see it right now. So, the patient's from out of town. Colleagues needed assistance. She's 27 and unfit for transportation. What do you think? Embolization is no longer an option. Therefore... <laughs> You're asking if I can do a circulatory arrest? You got me there. But why wouldn't you do it? Let's see. Here, look at this, doctor. The patient is male, age six to seven. What do you see? Well, the tumor is in the pituitary gland, and it's spreading into his internal carotid artery, crushing the optic nerve. And what else? To me, it looks good. It's encapsulated. It is possible to remove it completely without affecting other areas. Do you know the symptoms? 
fragmentary laws of vision, dizziness, weakness, and violation of speech function. <laughs> well, the speech function is still fine, at least for now. But you're right about the loss of vision. Sometimes the world becomes blurry. Do you understand that why I had you do that operation, Dr. Pravel? An intriguing turn of events. If you agree to this operation, I will handle the arrangements. We'll conduct an online meeting. I will be following the operation and will give an advice if needed. Well? I accept. That's good to hear. Let's discuss the details tomorrow. And what do you heard about my condition today stays between us? Understood. If I may, sir, you need to have an operation. That's true. If only I could do that myself, I'd have been rid of this already. But... I'm waiting for someone who I could literally trust with my life. Only if you agree, of course. No need to answer now. The x-ray that I've shown you earlier, it was taken two months ago. I'll get an update tomorrow. We'll see first, and then we'll decide. You should stay here overnight, so you don't waste time driving. Hmm? All right, sir. Excuse me, madam. Who are you? Um, Sir Nikolai invited me here. I wasn't aware my father had a visitor. Mm, um, I'm Dr. Pavel Andreev, uh, your father's colleague. Hmm. Okay, then. Um, so, uh, do you remember me? I was studying under your father. So you're more than just a guest to my father. See, my grandparents and my parents are all doctors. So now I'm allergic to your type. So we still don't like us. If I say I don't, you'll try to change my opinion? No, no, I wouldn't. Doctors suck. So, what are you up to now? Um... I don't know. I think I'll go home. I couldn't sleep here. Hmm. My father would be angry if I made you leave. That won't be possible for him. You're too beautiful. Flattering. My job requires me to tell you the truth. Wonderful. I would like to remind you that you're allergic to me. Hmm. I guess I forgot to sneeze. <laughs> All right, goodbye. Could the allergy be fake? Maybe it could. Mm-hmm. All right, doctor. Take care. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Good night, then. Close the door, please. Sure. Thank you.
neurosurgeons have recently conducted a unique operation. Of course, Dr. Stelnikov was supposed to operate on her. He and Kazachenko both relished these things. You mean difficult surgeries? I mean the big three, fame, power, and money. I understand why Semyonov chose Andreev. At least he is committed. ...such a complicated operation that our heroic neurosurgeons in the hospital managed to do the impossible and defeated the deadly disease. Dr. Pavel will conduct the operation. Sergey? The operation was conducted by the best neurosurgeons, and it wouldn't be an understatement to say that they are one of the world's top professionals. Now let's see the footage contributed by our reporter, Laika Pavlov. Daddy, get over here! You're on the television! I know, I'm coming! Well done, Daddy. Hey, this coat's too dirty. Leave it be, I'll have it cleaned. I just slipped near the clinic. Fell somewhere close to the entrance. Wait a minute, are you okay? Come on, let me check your back. Marina, stop being paranoid. Let's just have some coffee. Alright. Hmm? <laughs> Look at you. Looking like a lion, leading his precious pride. Marina put that thing on mute. Filming the operation was a bad idea. Hmm? You actually met that guy yesterday. Yeah. I told him to stay, but then he got embarrassed and ran away. Hmm. I used to be like him when I was young. Look at him. Stubborn, discerning, and reckless. Really? I don't think he's reckless. He looked like he's... vigilant, isn't he? <laughs> no. One that can be considered no less than a true miracle created by our cutting-edge doctors. Olga Pospilova will have a speedy recovery. She'll be back with us as soon as she... Oh, Mommy, look! Daddy's on television! That's Finish your meal. I can't just agree to that. Sorry, you don't have my approval. Daddy really is the best doctor in the whole world. What does that mean? Why are you leaving us, Doctor? What did I just say? Being away Finish up, Nika. surgery made it possible for Olga to be in full control of her speech center, which allowed the doctor to do their... Take a seat, Misha. Mm -hmm. Please take a seat. Mm -hmm. So what's up now, Doc? You think you can fix me? Of course we can, Misha. Fixing you is what our profession is all about. You can go ahead and take a look at your x-ray mm -hmm. while I take care of this. Your father called me. He feels worried. But it's up to you to decide whether to go through or not. Mm-hmm. Wait, hold on. <clears throat> but what if I refuse the operation? <clears throat> I mean, didn't you tell me that the tumor is in danger, so couldn't we just leave it there? Well, we could do that. Uh, your logic's plausible, but you should realize, Misha, that you're not a, uh, you're not an ordinary patient. So, uh, we feel responsible for your future and well-being. Other doctors would probably say that... that this type of tumor is benign, so you could just safely live with it. True. But you see, it's like a ticking time bomb. If we wouldn't deal with it, it might suddenly explode. Here, have some water. But, as I've been telling you, Misha, the decision is up to you. There are no obvious injuries. The ambulance reported that she fainted while waiting at the station. Our patient is presumably around 70 years of age. Skin condition is cold and turning pale. And there are symptoms of intracranial hemorrhage. Hey guys, get a CT scan of the brain and a biochemical blood panel. And prepare for an operation. The patient's experiencing tachycardia. May I? Thank you. Dr. Nikolai. I hate to interrupt you, but this is an urgent matter. What happened? You see, I have no idea what I should be doing anymore. I... I should be conducting a private operation over there right now. But instead, you, uh, allowed this doctor, Bondarenko, to conduct an off-schedule free operation. I understand. 
I examined your patient's x-rays and the situation isn't critical, but this ongoing operations of Bondarenko? Her situation is compelling. The woman was on the verge of dying when she came. Right, but the patient is in her 70s, even if she somehow comes around after the operation. <laughs> it's a waste of time. So what do you want? My patient's already paid a lot of cash. He's asking for the operation now, and hey, how am I supposed to explain this to him? You tell him exactly what I told you. Ruslan, I need you here. Dr. Mikhail? Yes? Tell me how old your mother is. None of your concern. Sit down. All right, well done. You've been a good assistant. I appreciate that, Doc. Sometimes I get the feeling that when one becomes a doctor, like with Dr. Mikhail, he hates Dr. Andreev and patients without a scent. Strelnikov isn't that picky, but he's confused about what's more important to him, fame or money. But Dr. Anna still loves him. That's quite an eventful life you all live in this place. <laughs> Hello? Pavel, I found my father's x-ray. I wanted... Wait, who's this? Oh, sorry, I forgot to say my name. This is Marina. We met yesterday at my father's place. Do you remember me? Marina, what happened? Well, as I said, I found my father's x-rays and... Hello? Marina, sorry, but I can't hear you. Hello, hello, do you hear me? I was cleaning up at my dad's place and then I found an x-ray with his name written on it, so I... I thought that I should, um, talk to you about it. And if I may, can we just keep this between us? We'll talk in person. Very well. Yeah, I'll head there straight away. Oh. So, are those really his? Yeah, he showed this to me last night. He didn't want me to tell anyone about it. I knew it. I knew it. I knew, I saw his condition, I saw that there was something wrong. I should have stayed with please him then, listen but to me. he was all alone and had just nobody to turn to. Just listen to me, Marina. It's not that bad. It's just a tumor. We can remove he it. He's suffering right now. He isn't hurting. As soon as I come back from the trip, I'll conduct the surgery. He needs an operation? Yes, he does. You'll do it personally? That's right. He'll come out all right. I had him take extra tests and the results look good. He's got every chance for a full recovery and return to normal. He won't even have to quit his job. Did you say all of that just so you could calm me down? Yes, and I'm being honest. I told you that's what my job requires. I'm begging you, please. Please help them. <laughs> I'm sorry. Daddy? Yes, hello. Yeah, I'm all right. I'm coming to pick you up, okay? No, I'm not asking for your permission. I will pick you up. What? Uh, everything's great, Daddy. Yes, I'm fine. <laughs> 